Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to World at War Comics. My next special guest is Mr. Sean. Mr. Sean, director of YouTube. Um, and anything else that you're doing from a social media standpoint is just on point, my friend, because I am loving everything that you're producing. And anybody that's watching this and isn't following Conan the Barbarian on YouTube and on socials, you're making a huge mistake. But Sean, you are doing such an amazing job around Conan. I want you to know that as a fan oh, of thanks, Conan, man. man. But welcome to, welcome to the, the podcast, man. It's great to have you. Dude, Tommy, thank you so much. Well, first, I, I do have to say I'm not doing it alone. Uh, May is our social media uh, person. So May is actually doing all the Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, she She's made a couple reels. Uh, she, she's, she has a TikTok background. Um, so she does incredible with that stuff. And she was with me at Comic-Con and helped me film a lot of the content. So uh, we're, we're, we're working together a lot. Uh, the YouTube stuff, like all the lore videos, the podcast, like that's kind of my territory. And then we got Marcos, uh, our head of marketing. He's, he's our fearless leader. So, and then also if you, if you haven't checked out the blog that we have on the website too, uh, amazing articles by Low Terry, uh, he, him and I partner up sometimes when we're doing interviews, he'll, he'll help me do research and, and vice versa. Like I'll look at his blogs cause he knows all the SEO stuff. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a true team over here. And, uh, but thank you so much. I met you at Comic-Con and you're the first person that's ever recognized me like in public or anything, you know who I was. So thank you so much. That literally made my day. Like I, I, I posted about it on Instagram, uh, the picture that we got. And uh, I went home and I, I told my partner and she was like, oh, you freaking dork. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, these are my people. Yeah, Thanks. for sure. man. Uh, I, I don't dude. miss anything that you uh, you produce on YouTube, man. They're, they're so you. educational. They bring back a lot of memories. Right. Obviously, um, from a Roy Thomas standpoint, from the 1970 and on. I'm almost 50, so I have read some of the older Roy Thomas stuff. Obviously not issue one. I had to read that later. But, um, you know, it, it has a really soft spot in my heart, Conan. And uh, obviously followed when it went to Dark Horse, came back to Marvel. And then when Titan took over, I'm a big Jim Zub fan. I love what he did when he was at Marvel. Um, and when Jim jumped on it, I, I felt like, not that I never stopped liking Conan, but there was like this spark that just happened, that, that like excitement and I reached out to Jim and he came on the podcast and I just had a blast talking to him about Conan um, and the respect that everyone at Heroic Signatures has and Titan of Robert E. Howard um, and ensuring that you're telling awesome new stories, but you're being really respectful of everything that Robert did. I just it's such an amazing mixture as a Conan fan that I'm absolutely loving it, my friend. Oh, dude, thank you. Yeah, Jim is the sweetest, man. I mean, he's been so supportive uh, since the moment I got this job. I reached out to him and he has been so generous with his time. Uh, it, it's I mean, it's kind of crazy at this point, to, but I could say that he's a friend, which is just like still mind boggling to me. Uh, we we met up at Howard Days. I got to see him at San Diego uh and unfortunately we were gonna hang at gen con but he got covid uh but just what an absolute i mean he's really driving things uh he's so good with his fans um so yeah you you can definitely expect to see as much of jim as i can get on the channels um but that's great yeah. man like yeah I, every, everything you said i agree with and it's it's still hard to believe that like i'm actually meeting all these people that I'm involved. I mean, I, I'm a fan just like you and it's just a dream come true. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it comes across man on your videos. You can see the excitement and I, I do apologize for not mentioning May. I did meet May with you um, during the oh, panel. Don't and apologize. So I, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. I know she's killing it. So um, uh, congratulations to you and the entire team, but it, it's been awesome. I just wanted to share real quick my screen um, just so everyone oh, realizes, yeah. man, if you are not 
going to YouTube right now and subscribing to Conan the Barbarian. You're making a huge mistake. Look at some of these videos. We were just talking before we hit record about Doug being on the, the podcast. I mean, what a gentleman, what an amazing talent. And the, the back and forth between him and De La Torre has been so much fun to see. They both have their unique style, but it's both been perfect for Conan. Um, and I think with the, the art and the detail that both of them put in, I can imagine mm. that it's almost necessary that they come on for two, three, four issues and then take a break because the detail within each issue is just insane. So it's got to be a lot of work um, to be able to do um you know interiors for a title like conan am i correct uh, in saying that oh yeah 100 percent. you know um chris and ashley uh you know ashley's our project manager chris is our editor uh their offices are right here next to me and they uh they are very very good about making sure that the artists get everything they need and that includes rest uh, and I know Jim speaks up for his artists all the time as well. Um, so, you know, being able to, to rotate between different artists is definitely key. We we want to make sure they're happy. I mean, even down, honestly, it goes so far as even um, guest artists for our covers. Um, you know, they're always sourcing really cool uh, cover art. And I've never been at a place in my career where artists and creatives are given so much freedom as they are here at heroic signatures uh, that that includes everyone that works here and everyone that works with us um you know i've been at places where the editor or the project manager will want to dictate exactly what they want and sure in, in some circumstances they may need to do that or they may have like a general idea of what they're looking for but that's why they hire the artists uh they'll find someone that can do that and they say like go do your thing um, you know, maybe there's a prompt for what the cover needs to in, uh, entail, like certain characters. But um, I mean, everyone gets so much creative freedom. And I think that's why you see uh, so much detail in the art, uh, uh, so much joy behind it. It's because they love what they're doing. And I think a lot of people recognize what uh, a, an awesome opportunity it is here. And um so, yeah, I think that's why you see a lot of that. You know, people are just taking care of. And then really that comes from like the top down. I think it's Fred and Jay, um, you know, uh, <laughs> those Norwegians know how it's done when it comes to work life balance and um, and being kind to your employees. So, I mean, yeah. just all around, man, like everyone's so lucky to be here. So, yeah. yeah, you kind of get that feeling, man, um, when you watch the videos and you see how collaborative everybody was. And then, you know, I had the chance to be at S uh, San Diego Comic Con and go to the panel. And what a fun panel, man. It's got to be one of the top panels that I went to. It was just so much fun. All the goodies yeah. and stickers that we all got. And obviously, I already had my free comic book day of uh, the Battle of uh, Blackstone, but to hand these out too. I mean, you really took care of the fans during the panel. It was just, oh, it was dude. a blast, man. It was a blast. Dude, I, yeah, I remember seeing you and I was like, uh, I, I was hoping to get to talk to you again after, but uh, we were in such a rush trying to film stuff on that last day. Um, yeah, yeah, man, that, that was fun. All I can say is get ready for next year. It's going to be bigger than you could imagine. Fingers crossed. Uh, yeah. So uh, there, there's some so. exciting stuff exciting yeah. stuff in the pipeline for sure man uh yeah. yeah that that was that was a great panel um it was i mean what an honor to have joe jesco up there uh uh that was cool man i got yeah. to hang with him a little bit after when he was doing his signings did you get something signed oh yeah, yeah. Dude, this, wow. i got yeah. jim and i got joe and then i got dan too dan was right next to uh jim so i got something signed by him but this joe jesco cover yeah Sweet. look at that man i this got is isherwood so I got oh, uh, Starkings in the corner. Nice, yeah. man. It's I such actually a cool... have, uh, I got a ton of vintage Savage Swords signed by Jusco. Um, and then I had yeah. him hold them up and talk about his favorite covers. So we're going to put together a reel for the channel. Him and I have been uh, playing tag for a while. He, he's a busy man. He's hard to get. Uh, but eventually I'm going to have him on the show. And uh but in the meantime, we got that to hold over fans. And I think I'm going to have to figure out some kind of giveaway for this. Uh, for I got sure. an extra. I got an extra for some fans. It's just a matter of oh. uh, how we do that. 
That'll be yeah. so popular. And I actually, and I might do a giveaway um, when we uh, post this because I got so many things signed by Jim and it just feels wrong to have that much signed by one person. Um, yeah. And so I got, I got Dan and Jim um, to sign on the interior of the trade. So I think this could be a lot of fun for collectors. Cause I, I got so much signed. I was just so excited. I took a bunch of stuff when I heard Dan and um, Jim were going to be there and they're so kind to sign so much stuff. So, um, but yeah, it'd be best. fun, Sean. Yeah. They're the best. They're the best for sure. Yeah, man. I, uh, um, I, I had a blast at Comic-Con. It was a lot of traveling back to back and I'm, I'm so behind on all my lore videos. <laughs> I recorded three lore videos back to back. And, and like when I first got this job back in like January, I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to build up this database of content and that didn't happen. I mean, the writing for these scripts alone, like, as you can imagine, the research, we're basing this all off of Howard Oh, uh, blah, blah, blah. sorry. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. You're good. Uh, okay. <laughs> and we base this all off of Howard and, uh, and so that. just the research that it takes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like part of the reason why my, one of my main motives is like, no, we, we need to educate people because there's a lot of Conan fans out there, but there's a lot of Conan fans that are exiles fans or, or Arnold fans, which is great because, I love the Arnold movie. I I understand a lot of people uh, are angry, but I think the only reason they're angry or they don't think it's a good movie, I think it's a good movie. I think that people with the whole Arnold thing, it's just because they haven't seen a faithful Robert E. Howard adaptation. And let me tell you something. I know that Arnold probably loves Robert E. Howard and would love to do that as well. Like back in the day, if everything had worked out and the technology was there, uh, I'm sure he would have done it because he was a great Conan. Um, but yeah, that's, that's part of the reason that, you know, one of my main motivations behind this channel is just to educate people, uh, to know that it's true, Howard. I mean, sometimes I get, I got a comment the other day, someone was like, Hey, this dude doesn't know that like Hulk and Conan are in the same universe. And I'm like, well, actually, no, <laughs> they are not. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it is fun. You know, it's all in good fun. And I think that that that's getting across hopefully yeah. to people that um they everyone seems to be enjoying it and look another thing like full disclaimer like i am by no means like an expert on conan i mean i it just i i read these books uh when i was younger uh the lancer paperbacks my dad was a huge tarzan and conan fan so i got right here, yeah there you go right there i have those uh those yeah. are the books i read my uh my dad passed those down to me and then he also passed down his collection of i think he had 20 of the original edgar rice bros 60s paperbacks uh and and i read tarzan first and then i got into conan and uh i i grew up in maine and maine is very samaria like it's i mean it's gloomy it's yeah. uh snowy uh mountains and forests and so and my dad always was like yeah, you know, you need to eat, you know, eat your meat and vegetables and like go out and do your chores out in the snow. You'll be like Conan. So uh, it really connected with me on a deep level. And what I didn't know is uh, that I wasn't reading Howard's original texts. Those were edited versions. And I'm sure you yeah. know that, right? Um, so when I got this job and I started talking to incredible mentors of mine, like you know, uh, they hooked me up with Jeff Shanks and Mark Finn. Uh, Mark especially uh, really schooled me on everything. And I, I went back and I, you bet your ass, I read all of Howard's original writings and boy, is it better. Boy, boy, does it really make a difference. Um, it truly does. And um, and so that that's kind of my story is like going back. And then, of course, I read a lot of Roy Thomas's original Savage Swords and comics runs. And I mean, the, those are really fun to read. But nothing really hits like Howard, man. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's why Zub's work is is really, you know, connecting with the fan base and why it's so great is because Zub truly loves Howard and he yeah. channels Howard in his writing. He's, he Howard was a poet, and you know, you need poetry to be able. You need some. You need some level of understanding of poetry to really be able to to uh, write a good Conan story. Uh, another person that gets that is John Hawking. You know, Hawking's incredible. Oh yeah, uh, he just I had love... a, 
his newest title, right? We should mention that. Oh um, yeah, City of the came Dead. Out, City of the Dead, yes. which is, which covers his first title that he did what 10, 15 years ago yes. or 20 yeah, years Emerald ago, Lotus. something like that. Enter Lotus, longer. yeah. Enter Lotus, I want to say was like 95, I want to say right. when it was published. And he wrote it in the early 90s. And uh, he so so the Living Plague, uh, we covered this in the podcast, and I'm sure you know, that was actually written in like 98. It was like ready wow. to go. And that's when the rights uh, to Conan uh, carried over, like it, the, the rights changed and that book just kind of got left in the in the dust. And he he told me that uh, he kind of panicked at first when they came back because he's like, oh, gosh, I don't know if I have it. And he ran down into his basement and he dusted off like an old floppy disk. And it was still there, man. I'm like, <laughs> wow. Can you imagine so, if it was missing? That would, that would have been horrible, man. That would have been horrible. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we love John. I mean, Chris, our editor, loves John. Everyone that meets John loves him. Um, and you can tell by that podcast interview what a cool guy he is. I mean, I, I'm he's kind of my pen pal now because we both love horror. And uh, we talked creature features for like an hour after the show. And I have this recorded, but I'm like, I can't throw it in the show because it has nothing to do with Conan, really. So I think I might throw, and also with Braithwaite, we ended up talking about paranormal stuff like ghosts uh, for like an hour. And I'm like, I'm thinking that maybe we have a Conan podcast Halloween special. That would uh, be cool. In the wings here. Yeah. I mean, I just need an excuse to put that stuff out. But uh, yeah, man, Hawking's great. He gets it. He he went to Howard Days as well. And gosh, man, I you got to go, uh, Tommy. Yeah, like, you have I to want to. Out. I mean, I know it's 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 a it's not an easy travel. I'll say that. I mean, but it is one hundred percent worth it if you 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 have to do it someday. For um, sure. They sent they sent me out in June, and I filmed all this content, which um I'm sitting on because I want to do a proper Robert E. Howard lore video. I think mm -hmm. the internet needs it. Uh, we need a high production. Uh, and, and I interviewed everyone I could there. Uh, one of the coolest things that they had uh, this year was they restored his original writing desk, mm. which I think Zub posted some pictures of. Uh, but oh man, the power that that thing has! I mean, you can. So, it, I don't know. If, have you heard the story about the desk? About what happened to his? He wrote every story. No. On, oh, uh. So, so Howard's original writing desk. He wrote, you know. Solomon Kane, like, you know, Steve Costigan, Cull, Conan, like every story. Uh, I don't know if you've seen pictures of his his uh, room. It's very small. It was on a porch, pretty much. He had his little bed. He had a window that connected to his uh, his mother's bedroom and what was mom and dad's bedroom. And then everything was written in this tiny little space on this desk. And after he passed away, uh, I'm not quite sure how the change of hands happened, but but uh, eventually it winded up with this this older lady and she had it for probably about 60, 70 years, maybe like a really long time. And it was her coffee table. She chopped off the legs. She she was using it as a coffee table. And the the Howard Foundation knew about it, like all of the scholars, like everybody uh, related to the foundation. I've been trying to get this this uh, desk back from her for decades. Uh, luckily, she put a glass covering over it. So there's no you know, stains or anything like that of that nature. Uh, so she did take pretty good care of it, but it is so funny because they'd be like, hey, uh, what, how much do you want for the desk? We'll pay you like a thousand bucks, like whatever. And she's like, no, I, I like my coffee table. This is my coffee table. <laughs> so so people in Cross Plains, man, they're people. They, they like their stuff, you know? Um, <laughs> so like you kind of have to respect her for that, but man, it's Howard's writing desk. <laughs> this isn't just the coffee table. So eventually she passes away and then there is a back and forth with her children trying to get the desk. And eventually after pestering and pestering, uh, they are finally able to acquire it. Uh, they said, okay, come pick it up. Well, they show up to come pick up this desk and it has been on the sidewalk for a week, seven oh, no. days, which is there next to the garbage like could have rained could have you know like think thank god it didn't rain or anything man okay uh, yeah yeah you know like it was just sitting there i mean so, texas my son lives in texas there's a crazy weather anything could have happened hail yeah tornado like who knows tornadoes you <laughs> name it man 
And and so they were finally able to to get that and restore it back to its beautiful original conditions, put the legs back on it. And uh, I was there for the ceremony where they brought that back in. And to see these guys, man, people like Mark Finn, you know, Shanks, uh, Bill Cavalier and like uh, Patrice, like all of them, they I mean, they almost had tears in their eyes seeing this thing like put back in that room. Uh, Zub got emotional, man. Like I filmed him sitting down at the desk and he like went into a trance for a second it, it there is some power there man there's some power in cross planes um and it is the smallest town there's two restaurants uh everyone there is so friendly right but i mean you know it's it's in the middle of nowhere i, I had to drive like you know almost an hour just to get to my airbnb which i i love man i rented a mustang convertible for the trip. oh nice <laughs> i was cruising and i i just like i can't tell you how many times i just screamed like you know at the top of my lungs like with joy like how fun that trip was man but uh that that was definitely one of the highlights aside from getting to meet all of these incredible people that have carried conan for years that have yeah. that have breathed their their soul into keeping conan alive uh in 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 howard's in you know in respect to howard uh, I mean, everything from uh, getting to meet the original couple that were responsible for just getting Howard's original text back in print, you wow. know, that that alone is a big thing. And then Fred, Fred, uh, man, he he has done so much for this for 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 Conan. Uh, I mean, you know, not everyone's a fan of the 2011 movie, but man, he he is really uh, a great guy and he's brought in so much. I mean, just the opportunities he's given me. Uh, and and Marcos has given, and then Marcos was able to pass along to me. I mean, gosh, man, I just think we've had a lot of good fortune in the past twenty years, uh, past two decades here with Conan, and and it's been slow. But I can promise you that what you're seeing right now, you know, this didn't happen overnight. This has taken a long time, and it's a lot of different people. It's hardcore fans. It's fans like yourself. You know, it's it's Fred. It's it's heroic centrist Titan. Everybody that that you know loves Conan, they love Conan. They love Howard, and uh, it's that dedication. I feel like I've been bitten by that bug, man. I mean, I'll tell you, if you ask Marcos, like the number one problem I have is that like I just never stop working. It's because I feel like Conan needs me, and he <laughs> certainly doesn't, by the way. But I feel I don't like know. He does. I, I, you can learn so much for watching some of your videos. Even like I forget so much because I've I've read it a long time ago, and I watch one of your videos, and it's just sparking memories and stuff like that. Your whole show that you did on the Hyborian Age and all the different ages. I mean, it was absolutely fantastic. Like if you really want a quick, um, like thirty to forty five minute course on the Hyborian age, that video is one of the best videos I've ever seen explaining it. So, and there's other videos like that, that really go into detail, go into detail on Robert E. Howard and all the other characters um, that I think a lot of fans are going to learn more about here um, very soon, just from what we got from the panel in San Diego. Um, but mm -hmm. man, it, it's incredible. Sean, you're, you're killing it on YouTube, bro. Dude, thank you so much. I mean, those are that's the kindest, those are the kindest words I, I could hear. I, I really appreciate it. I've I'm so humbled by uh the response that I've gotten from the community. Uh, you know, I was a little nervous, honestly, at first, because I gosh, I don't I wasn't real, I'm more of an editor. Like I I'm an editor before this. Like I did uh art direction, editing. Um, I worked for a really big YouTube channel uh where like i just really cut my chops even further um so i've been editing for years and i think a lot of it just comes from me never being satisfied i mean even my podcasts like i want everybody to sound good so i'm going in there and i'm like cutting stuff out and i think i over edit a little bit but it's just because i care and i want to i'm so dedicated to everything um and I just want to see what i would want to see as a fan but with that with the lore videos man like another great resource that i have like aside from you know all the amazing books is definitely uh you know people like mark finn uh jeff shanks bill cavalier i mean fred is like everybody anybody that i i i need to know something from or check something with like they're there for me and and even down to like i uh with that that last lore video 
I mispronounced uh, Vendia uh, because <laughs> I, I was like, how do you pronounce this? And I, I listened to an audio book and it was wrong. And I was like, call it Ven Venadia. And I'm like, no, it's Vendia. But, you know, look, man, that's just something that, like, unless you have someone that's, like, super knowledgeable, you just wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And you have a lot it. of fans, have pro we've probably been pronouncing it wrong this whole time, too, as we're reading it, right? So, sure. yeah, 100%. But it man. made a lot more sense, too. I was like, oh, <laughs> India, Vindia, like, that yeah. makes sense, right? Um but that that video was a massive, a massive undertaking. And so it was the first one because that, that was actually a, a directive from Marcos. And, and he's super smart because, I mean, he'll give me suggestions. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, I want to do this other thing. But then he's always so right about it. Like, he's like, we need a video about what defines Conan. And at first I'm like, oh, like, that's a lot of homework. Like, that's that, that's not something you can just pull out of a book. Right. Like, how yeah. do you do that? And so that one, especially like I, I, I early on realized that I have to get a lot of people. I have to, you know, every guest I can find uh, to just talk about what defines Conan. And that becomes personal in a lot of situations because I'm sure that you, uh, Tommy, like, I'd love to hear your thoughts after about what defines Conan to you personally, because it does become personal on a certain level. Yeah, Everyone has a different sure. response to it. And uh, aside from trying to just really go back to Howard's original text and find out like what, you know, Howard says about it. And then, you know, that sure. The Hyborian Age video was also massive because I was just like, you know, that original essay I left out so much. I mean, there is a lot in there. Uh, and to me, like every video out there was, there's a lot of great other great uh, videos that adapt that essay on YouTube, but I, I felt like all of them were too overwhelming and uh, I'd lose focus. And so I, I realized that, you know what, the biggest challenge with uh, building any channel, as I'm sure, you know, is patience because you know, you can do like the the highlights of that just for beginners. And then in another podcast in the future, another lore video, you can go into greater detail, like about, uh, you know, the the Acheron or whatever, you know, yeah. but uh, that that was kind of my main prerogative. And, and when I when I actually had the original cut, I had this whole section about what inspired Howard to create the Hyborian in Thurian Age? Well, specifically the Thurian Age, because he did call first. Call first, and yeah. I went over like Madame uh, Madame Blavatsky and the the problem with Atlantis by Lewis Spence. And uh, well, I'm not sure is that the right one. I think it. I think it is the problem with Atlantis. Gosh, Jeff's gonna kill me if I get that wrong because he gave me a book <laughs> at Comic Con. But but anyway, I I was like super interested in the the fringe science theories. And I'm like, you know what, dude. This is another video. Let's put it away. We'll put that out at some point. People will love that. Maybe yeah. put it in the Howard video. But like, it wasn't until the final week before I uploaded where I'm like, oh god, this is so stressful. I got to get this out. And I'm like, no, just cut it out, man. Like this, this will see the light of day at some point. But let's not overwhelm people. Yeah. So that that's a big thing. And like I said, I recorded like three videos. I have a video on Thulsa Doom that I did. That's like just needs to be edited. Uh, but I think the next lore video, uh, I just ran a, a community test and people seem really into the high boring age kingdoms. And dude, I got to be honest, like that was lower on my priority list because I, I was like, yeah, that's kind of boring. I don't want to go over that. And Marcos was like, no, you need to do the no. kingdoms. And I'm like, he, he made me go back and add the kingdoms to the high boring age video because I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to cannibalize it. Like that's its own video. But he was right. He was right yeah. about it. And people loved it. And that's... Yeah. Uh, so that that video is definitely in the works. But before anything, uh, after th this next week, I'm going to be working hard on the Howard verse video. I yeah. I took 10 of Howard's characters, um, the ones that are going to be in Blackstone, plus Cole Brule and Bran McMorn. Yeah. And I I did little uh, one page scripts that tells you like a crash course and what you need to know about those characters. And I think at some point we might break those up into individual videos and throw them on a heroic signatures channel whenever we get around to that. But for now, I want people to be just as excited about Solomon Kane, about Dark Agnes, yeah. you know, Conrad and Kirwan as I am. Because as you know, the 
Battle of the Black Stone approaches us. September, I mean, right? We have this episode. Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Um, I mean, this this issue right here, man, uh, it's it's fantastic. I mean, we got a, a, a conic for every character in Blackstone in this. This is like a mega issue. Uh, and I have to uh, give a shout out to Mr. Jeff Shanks, uh, yeah. my partner in lore, for his debut in comics. He did an incredible uh, Conrad and Kirwan, uh, which, which they are super cool characters. I'm so excited for people to learn more about Conrad and Kiron. Uh, they connect Howard. Like I, one of the things that Howard did was he, he was kind of the grandfather of the shared universe in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, he, you, you, I'll, I'll talk about it in the video that's coming out, but you know, yeah, sure. You got Edgar Rice Burroughs and Jules Verne. You've got, you know, people connecting sort of loose threads, their characters together. But Howard on hit on the level that Howard did it back then. I mean, he was one of the first to really do that. And you know, people always mention you know uh, Clark Ashton Smith and, and Lovecraft, and you know that was all in good fun, like just referencing each other and each other's work. I don't know how planned it was, right? But with Howard, I mean, you can he has a full on crossover between Cull and Brand McMorn, and. Yeah. Uh, even in a Conrad and Kirwan story, you know, uh, Thothamon's ring, uh, the hunter in the ring, you know, shows mm -hmm. up and it is really cool how connected <laughs> it is. And so, you know, people when they're like, give us a red Sonia, like, it's like, how about dark Agnes? How about the real <laughs> red Sonia? Yeah. Like, there's yeah. pistols and not a sword, yeah. you know? I mean, personally, like, don't expect them to show up anytime soon, but I'm really excited for uh, Steve Costigan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, fingers crossed, Mark Finn gets to be involved with that because, man, I don't know anyone that knows uh, costing him better than that guy. He has yeah. some real passion for it. Mike the Bulldog. Oh, my gosh. And <laughs> like, like I, I'm a big fan of uh, the he, Howard. You can tell Howard like dogs, man. I mean, Slasher and <laughs> yeah. Black River. And then um, Mike the Bulldog is is fucking great. Like, sorry, I don't know if you can sense. You're good. Right you're now, good. But, uh, you're good. You're good. Dude, like. I, I'm always thinking like this is like a James Gunn like dream man like yeah. you know Mike the Bulldog ripping out throats and being cute and <laughs> I, man I, I I'm really I'm really hoping that uh, that character appears at some point but uh, anyway man like yeah Dark Agnes super cool she's right up there but Conrad and Kirwan if I can yeah. just, just go back they're like a night if I can sell anyone that's listening on Conrad <laughs> and Kirwan. It's a 1930s X Files team with a little bit of mix of like the Wild West kind of like where you know uh, uh, Kirwan is kind of like that that old cowboy that doesn't want to pick up his guns you know until he absolutely has to and guns being magic right or dealing with the occult uh, maybe not magic per se that's, that might be a poor, poor choice of words but you know and then uh, his partner is a little bit more eager uh, so it, it it's it's a really fun dynamic between those two and I think. Shanks absolutely nails it. Uh, and of course, shout out to everybody, everybody involved. Zub's Zub's got a part in this, obviously a major yeah. part because he's the architect. And I can't say anything, but I know stuff. <laughs> and I know some of his master plan. And boy, am I excited. Uh, so as long as uh, the fans love it and everyone reacts well, uh, you can expect us to definitely explore these other corners of the Howard verse in yeah. the future. So. Yeah, no, I'm so excited. Um, and uh, just being there and seeing the excitement around Battle of the Black Stone and really diving into the rest of the Robert E. Howard um, universe. I mean, this is going to be, I think, a first time for a lot of even Conan fans, right? Because um, I didn't grow up with a lot of the other characters outside of Cole. Obviously, I, I read Cole. Um, Marvel put out a Cole, which was awesome. But a lot of these other characters that we're going to be introduced to could be for the first time for a lot of fans. Now, I've read a lot of Robert E. Howard, so I have a little bit of understanding, especially like Solomon Cain. But, man, this is going to be amazing. So I don't want to give too much away. If you were at the panel, you got to see a lot of really cool stuff. Um, but, man, I want everyone to be surprised when they pick up that first issue of Savage Sword um, coming up really quick. Because I think you're going to be blown away by how all this ties together. Um, the, the imagery that's popping up in everyone's little world and how it's bringing them all together. Dude, this is going to be dope as hell. And I could see by Jim, the way he talked about it, he was so excited, man, in that panel <laughs> to be able to kind of share everything that's about to happen and what we could as fans be ready for. It just, 
it was so fun to be part of that panel because of the excitement around the Battle of Blackstone. So I, I'm, well, dude, I'm down. I'm ready, man. Dude, one of the great things, I mean, I'm sure you've read like the classic Savage Sword. You know, the I mean, nothing can really oh, yeah. like top that. I mean, that stuff's great. Yeah. But I, I got a beat say, up version of it, though. Really beat up. But yeah. Oh, wow. It's, hey, man. It's, no, it's a little beat up. Great. But <laughs> let's see. I got uh, I don't know if this necessarily trumps that because it's not it doesn't belong to me. It's the companies, but we got the oh, original Savage Tales right there. A hundred percent trumps it, man. That that's nice, man. <laughs> well, it's not mine. It doesn't belong to me. But uh, yeah, man. Look, one of the greatest things about this new Savage Sword, at least me to according to me, uh, I love. Obviously, I love that they brought it back to black and white. It's an actual magazine, but I think the they really play up the anthology aspect of it a little bit more. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously the original Savage Swords, you go back, they had call stories, they had yeah. Solomon Cain, yeah. uh, but it wasn't as frequent. And and I really love that this new series is not only exploring other characters in the Howard verse, but also uh, they are giving so many different artists and writers opportunities to just play in the sandbox. And, and not only just like that, but different styles of art. And I think uh, based on what I've been seeing, because Chris and Ashley do such a great job is uh, they, they really look for that. They're like, Hey, what have we tried? Like a, like there's a dark Agnes manga in this next issue, um, which is, which is interesting, right? Completely yeah. different take on the character. Uh, and, and you just will be able to explore that as as long as fans love it and they're digging and we listen to feedback, man. Yeah. That's another big reason that we started. Uh, Marcos uh, had the initiative to start this channel. Why he brought me on board was the community. And I really, man, like I'm sure you see, like I respond to every comment. I don't think that they realize or maybe I think people are starting to catch on that it's actually us responding. <laughs> it's me, as far as it's either Marcos or myself. Like we yeah. are always there responding to everything we can. And, you know, sometimes we'll get a few dick comments like, you know, I was actually <laughs> of course. More, I was more con- I'm sure you know how that is. Like that was one yeah. of my biggest like, oh, God, what if people, you know, are mean? And the truth is, like, sure, I get that. I just delete the comment, man. Like if it's something that you're going to be like rude or like. <laughs> I, it's like I, I, so, I, so I crazy and unnecessary, it. right? It's just crazy. Yeah, I always have a good sense of humor about it. Like, I think usually nine times out of ten, when someone like makes fun of me, like I laugh at it, but then I just delete it because I'm like, I don't want to encourage that. Like, you know, this is this is our sandbox, so it's like you can have, you can definitely have feedback, like critical feedback, like I, you know. But if you're gonna be mean, then you're gone, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, but so far, dude, like that is so rare. I think I've noticed that if a video hits 20,000, that's when you'll start getting like, you know, jokers coming in, like saying things and you're like, (laughs) that's funny, but see you later. I had one person, I was astonished. Like someone, someone got upset that I said, like, and subscribe like twice. And like, I, I, like you said it the first time and I was like, Hmm. All right, fine. I'm really interested in this video, though, so I'll continue. But then you said it a second time, and goodbye. I will not be like, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like, <laughs> it's just you go to any YouTube, man. Like, we have to do that because yeah. myself, dude, I'll watch videos all the time and I'll, I just won't subscribe because I don't think of it. I'm so yeah. engrossed in what I'm watching. So sometimes, you know, but dude, like, the feedback's great. And I'm starting to utilize the community feature. So just know that I'm listening to, we're all listening to everything. Like we're trying to do more chain mail. Um, so, you know, let your voices be heard because this, these videos are being made for you guys. Like we're really trying to connect to our fan base here. That's um, awesome. Man. Yeah, dude, new Savage Sword, you're going to love it. And I, I can promise that uh, again, like sometimes we'll just geek out and we'll be like, what if we got Kevin Eastman to do something? Like what yeah. would that look like? Uh, and they'll be like, oh, well, we reach out to him maybe in the future. Or like yeah. uh, Chris and I were talking the other day and we're like, oh, God, what if Stephen King did something like and we know that that's never going to happen. Right. But you like, never know. You never know. Yeah, I don't know. man. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just like it's just part of the fun of working here is like you can just be like, I wonder if and that's kind of what I do with the the uh, podcast, too, is I'll just reach big. Like, I think my first I'm glad this didn't happen. But I, I reached out to Ron Perlman like before I even started. And I'm just like, you never know. And of course, like we're not there yet. Right. Yeah. But um, it's it's fun. So what yeah. about you, dude? Like, tell me. I mean, I know people probably hear a lot about you because you this is your show. But 
uh what, can you tell me a little bit more about like your fandom with conan and and what yeah. uh what what does conan mean to you personally yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Conan has been a big part of my life for a while. Obviously, there was a big break because I got married, had kids. I was out of comics for a little while, um, but came back. But my my real first introduction is to Roy Thomas. Um, so reading some of the older issues, like in the 80s specifically, because I was about nine or 10 years old when I got into comics. I was born in 75. So, you know, in the mid 80s is when I really jumped into comics. And uh, it was just different, right, because... I'm a big fan of all, like all the superhero stuff. So, you know, Superman, I'm more of a DC guy than a Marvel guy, but I love it all. Spider-Man, all of it. Um, Interesting. But this, was, this was so different from what I grew up reading, right? Um, because of the savagery, um, because of the, the manliness of Conan, man. It was very attractive to me. And I come from a big military family. So my dad was in the Marines, right? Right at the end of Vietnam, both my grandparents lived a block away from me, so I was very lucky to have them close by me, my um, my upbringing. And both my grandfathers fought in World War II, one in Japan, one in um, North Africa and Europe. Um, and they were as manly as it gets, right? I mean, I remember mm. my grandfather, 80 years old, falling off the ladder, um, cut his whole head open, and he just went to his regular doctor, not an emergency room, not even. Mm. They're like, dude, you can't be here. He goes, no, no, they're going to charge me too much. Just go ahead and stitch it up. And they just sat there and stitched it up. No, uh, like, drugs or anything, man. And then he walked out, got back on his ladder. I think he was putting up his Christmas lights. Like, that's – when I think of Conan, man, I think of someone who obviously could be very understanding. A lot of people don't realize there are parts of Conan that there is a little bit of a righteousness to it. He doesn't like people being taken advantage unless he's the one doing it for whatever purpose he has. All right? And then there's that savagery side of Conan where it just uh, – uh, switch gets turned and you don't want to be in front of them when that happens. Right. Um, but man, I, everything about him, I loved, and there's, I could relate to a lot of my family, um, believe it or not through Conan, um, because of that, just, I don't know, man, I'm not going to put up with shit and I'm going to do what I need to do. Um, mm -hmm. and I don't mind running over anybody to it. Also kind of a recluse, right? I mean, very much a loner. Um, a lot of the times, um, until obviously you get to King Conan and some of the things that happened later on, but man, his travels, the adventure, I think I love that too. Um, comics is escapism, right? And if I have to go into a comic and I'm reading the things that are happening around me, I start to lose interest because I don't need a comic to be lost in that world. Conan mm -hmm. takes me to a whole nother world, man, going through all these different, um, you know, obviously you have Samaria, but then you have all these other places that he's traveling through and the experiences that he's having. I need that in my life. And so Conan always provided that to me. And a lot of times in regular comics with superheroes, a lot of times that would be missing for me. I go into Conan, man. If I'm reading this, I forget where I'm at for an hour or whatever it takes me. And I love that feeling of just being lost. Um, you can almost see the surrounding, right? Because the artwork is always really special. Um, and then the character, man, you just like, what the hell's going to happen next? I can't wait to flip the page. So uh, I don't mm. know if I answer your question, but Conan oh, has yeah, been yeah. awesome for that reason alone. Um, just the escapism that it's provided me throughout my life. And I absolutely love it, man. I dig it. And uh, that's why I've collected it for so long and I've gone back and it's one of the only things that I have almost a complete line of is Conan, right? Um, because it's meant so much to me and, I hope, you know, my son, un unfortunately, is not a big comic book fan. I was like, <laughs> someone's going to get this stuff eventually, and I hope they get lost in it like I did. Where did you go wrong? I don't know, man. Uh, you know, he lives in no, Texas. Yeah. He's a lineman. He just never got into comics for some reason. I tried, and all my I have three girls and a boy. None of them like comic books. My youngest is really into manga, so she likes watching anime and stuff like that. But, yeah, I just Dude, don't know. You know what it is? I feel like it's just, you know, you always rebel against your parents a little bit. It's like, <laughs> what? Baseball? Baseball sucks. <laughs> exactly, like, yeah. My dad was a huge baseball player, and uh, and so is my little brother. Like, he's going to make it to the majors. And That's just, awesome. I have terrible coordination, man. I'm not athletic at all. I did martial yeah. arts because yeah. uh, I, I wanted something. I'm a runner. Like I said, I did cross country. Uh, so, I obviously, like, I, I like – physical activity but it just the coordination man is not there for me i couldn't yeah. do it and i just grew up with everyone being like hey i bet you're you got a real uh swinging hand like your dad huh and i'm like nope <laughs> but 
he did pass on Conan to me, he passed on books. And, and I was, I always had a book in my hand. I was always that kid, man. I just love reading. Yeah. Um, and it, it does seem like things are changing a little bit nowadays, which sucks. Like, yeah. you know, even with myself, I, I find it like, Oh man, was the last time I picked up a book. Uh, it, it's just tough with these screens in our faces all the time, but yeah. I totally get what you, what you said. Uh, you know, I think that a lot of people have similar feelings and, uh, Conan represents something a little more old fashioned. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I also think another side to it too is, you know, Conan represents the change that you wish you could see in something like in the world around him. Like if, yeah. he, if he doesn't like anything, you know, he's going to slice right through it. Um, and and uh and and make a change happen like justice as he sees fit a little bit i guess yeah, kind of like sure. judge dread in some ways right Jury, yeah next absolutely <laughs> he's everything yeah. yeah he's gonna he has this definition of how the world should operate and if he sees that it's not operating in that fashion he has no problem helping it get to whatever his definition is. And I love that. Yeah, and what's man. crazy is he has a side of love too and compassion. You see oh, for sure. how he reacts when he loses someone that's close to him. So it's savagery, but there's this other side of him too that you're like, it's like two extremes. And yet this man is able to do both, which is relatable at times, which I absolutely love. Yeah, man. No, he he is, you know, the great thing about Conan is that, uh, you know, when he's a king, uh, he cares about his people. No one's going 100%. hungry and dying in the streets in Aquilonia yep. when 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 Conan is in charge. He, you know, is he going to stop and save a kitten on the side of the road? Like hell no. Like he's not. He's not gonna maybe do like if he doesn't feel like it. Like those kinds of random acts of kindness or whatever. He's yeah. not like a Superman. But when he's king, you know, it's his duty, and he takes yeah. that seriously. It's his responsibility. He's there. And I think I had someone ask on the channel recently, like, oh, when Conan was king, why didn't he expand his territory? Why didn't he conquer all of the Hyborian age? And I'm like, because he that's not his desire. He has no desire. Like, I understand where the confusion comes from, because we hear the name, the word Conan the Conqueror so often. That's like a title that's associated with him. Right. Um, But he just you know, like he he's there for his people and he's satisfied with what he has. Like that's not yeah. his purpose in life. Uh, and I think that harkens back to Sumerian culture. Like, you know, the, if they never really expand their territory because they don't they there, there's so much like fighting between tribes and all that. But also it's just like part of being Conan is is being satisfied with you and like kind of minding your business to a certain degree, you know. Um, and then that's why, like, hey, look. You know, if if you stay out of Conan's way, like you might hit him at the wrong place at the wrong time. But like, you know, if you stay out of his way, like he's not going to have a problem with you. Like as long yeah. as you're respectful. Uh, but if you go in, in his face and burp in his face or whatever, like, you know, you're going to get your head cut off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's black and white, right? One of his friends, like, yeah, he's a pack leader. If you, if you harm his pack, man, he's going to come after you. So, yeah. uh, but yeah, dude, yeah. Um, there's so much great things and, and there's so much exciting things I want to do here, man. I mean, yeah. even down to just like the merch, like we're trying to get new merch out and uh, yeah. that's like YouTube channels at a point now, like I just discovered the other day where like we can ask the fans what they want to see in, in and yeah. merch and stuff. And uh, you know, uh, there's so many exciting opportunities, but my goal for this year is I'm trying to get to 10,000 uh, yeah. subscribers. So, so help me out guys. Like, <laughs> Let's let's you're you're growing fast, man. You're growing really fast, though, Sean. It's it's like to be a year at four thousand five hundred, something close to that, if I'm not mistaken. I could look right now, but yeah, Yeah, four thousand six hundred and thirty. So, dude, that in how long? Uh, three months. Yeah, that's insane. No one grows that fast, man. So, uh, that just shows the passion around this character and shows that your representation in your videos of this character is spot on, man. That's the only reason why you would grow that fast. There. Dude, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let me, let me ask you your feedback. Uh, so I, I'm, I, I think part of like any channel, as you know, is like constantly not getting too comfortable, like making shifts, experimenting. You have to be comfortable with that. Uh, and, and always trying to make the next thing a little better uh, and, and always following the data too. Right. So, with the podcasts, I, I found that the most successful podcast we have, maybe not by much, but like I think the response to this was actually 
uh, Jeff Shanks, where he mm. really got into the lore. And that, I mean, first off, that title was so salacious. So I think that's part <laughs> of it. Like, but it was interesting, right? Like, are yeah. the gods only actually aliens? So part of my plan moving forward is I have a couple more podcasts coming out. We have Sarah Fazetta, and I know you talked to Sarah. Oh, She's yeah. amazing. She's awesome. We have, um, we have Joel Bylos. Uh, so he's the uh, chief creative officer over at Funcom. Uh, with exiles and all that we're actually going to fingers crossed no promises but I'm, I'm trying to get permission to show footage of an unreleased conan narrative that he worked on oh, wow. uh which is pretty cool it's not a secret you could dig this up but i mean it, he he had a playable level of tower of the elephant where john reese davies was taurus uh and wow. so fingers crossed like we'll get to show that footage on the channel and we'll get to talk to them a little bit about that Conan narrative. Cause I know a lot of people, that's what they want. Like I think exiles is great. Um, but not everybody is a survival game kind of person, yeah. right? Like I mean, there's a hunger yeah. out there for, for a narrative. And I know that everyone's hard at work trying to make that happen, but hopefully in the meantime, uh, this will be an exciting thing for fans. So that's going to so. be big. And then also another podcast that I had that was super fun for me, I hope fans love it just as so much as I did, was with John Walsh. Uh, he did, I don't know if you guys have read the official story oh. of uh, the movie. Yeah, so this, yeah. this book was really cool. And John Walsh is incredible. And I, I hope everyone will uh, forgive that we went off on a little tangent about Ray Harryhausen. Because uh, <laughs> Ray actually almost made a Conan movie in the 60s oh, wow. uh, before some of his Sinbad movies. And it was going to be, but he wanted it to be bloody and violent and he was so inspired by frazetta uh so it just didn't really work with his family friendly image i guess uh and it just never went so far as the like, conversations but like that almost happened like that would have been amazing um and apparently when i talked to sarah uh, uh frank was like a huge harry hasen fan oh. so like imagine like the alternate reality where the two of them got together and made that work i mean but as you know, like there are other issues, greater issues at hand. I mean, really, another big reason we have to thank the 1982 film is just bringing all three of those fragmented rights holders to the Conan properties together, you know, like Lynn Carter and Sprague uh, and, and forming Conan properties. Uh, and you can thank Pressman for that, especially, too. Um, the, anyway, it's just an incredible that that's a fun podcast. But after that, man, you know, uh, I think I'm going to make a shift and I want to know what you think. Uh, we're thinking about uh, changing it so that we have Jeff uh, as more of like a regular contributor and Mark. Uh, so these scholars so that, you know, every other episode will be a lore focused podcast because I can only do so much to get those lore videos out there. And I think that that'll do a couple of things. Like one, it allow us to experiment to see like how much interest there are in certain subjects. And then maybe I take that and I'll adapt it into a lore video with like yeah. images and everything. But I think that that might be a, a, a fun way to, to grow a little bit more. And, and it seems like everyone's super into the lore and I can only do so much at a time. So I yeah. think fans like that. And that will also allow me to uh, take more time. Uh, and we'll still continue to do guests, but I think it'll be a little bit more like every other episode or every two lore video, uh, lore podcast. But I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I love that idea. I think that's great. I think other ideas too is, and, and I, I know uh, it's not Titan, but you know, so many other things um, Conan related were created. What is the difference? And like over time, like if you start with Robert E. Howard and you read some of those Conan, um, mm -hmm. how do, how do these differ from Conan written by Robert E. Howard? Because they do, um, even you mm -hmm. have, uh, like you have Del Rey, you have Lancer, you have the ACE, like, and these are like more, um, true to the Robert E. Howard, but these are not right. These have a lot of, uh, extras so, that have been written. Right. And I think going into that lore and then even the dark horse time frame, um, there's a lot mm -hmm. of like stories that go back in time of his childhood and, and, and they kind of build up what it was like to be Conan as, you know, from birth all the way to a warrior. Like, there's so much, I think, uh, that, I guess it goes with lore, but there's a lot written, man. And how much of it is aligned with Robert E. Howard and how much is a lot of people taking their own stories and adding to it, I think would be fun as well. So that, yeah, that's a great, that's a great idea. I, I actually, I I'd probably bring on Mark Finn for that. By the way, I don't know if you know Mark, but I have to give him a shout out. Like, please 
if you're interested in learning more about Howard, his uh, biography on Howard, Blood and Thunder, I mean, it's the best Howard biography you could possibly read. There's some others out there, and we're not going to mention them because uh, they're not that accurate, right? But but Mark really did a service to the Conan community, to the Howard fans, by by writing that biography, man. Like, if you really want to know who Howard was as a person, definitely check that out. Um and I, I, I want to bring Mark on the show more on the channel. I, I feel bad because I did interview him months ago and it was it, I, I, I just haven't gone to it yet to edit because I had such a backlog. But I also want to kind of coordinate that in time with the release of the, the Howard video. But I'd, I'd have him on for that because he's very, very passionate about mm -hmm. uh, and we could even have Patrice. Patrice, uh, he edited uh, those Del Rey books. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he, he's responsible for helping that out as well. Um, uh, so yeah, man, like it's cool to know that you're interested in that stuff. And I'm always curious. Yeah. I, you know, I, I always want to gauge like the interest of the fans. Cause I mean, there's so many directions and, you know, also I'm glad you mentioned dark horse because I noticed a lot of people really, really love the dark horse era. There's a lot of love. Oh for yeah. It. Um, I mean, that's Busick, right? Had a, a pretty, yeah. I have a, I have one somewhere, but yeah, I mean, th this run was actually really good, right? Again, that's where you want to understand what part of it comes from Robert E. Howard, what part comes mm -hmm. from people having the freedom to tell their own stories around Conan. And I think both are okay. I, I don't have any problem with that. I enjoy, uh, you know, hearing new stories, but it's really cool to understand here's what Robert E. Howard created and here's what someone else did. In addition to that, and I think it's good to know the difference between the two, right? Um, and I, I think that's fun to understand that because some of these, you know, City of Thieves, it was a lot of fun, man. Yeah, so, um, you know, I can tell you off the uh, top of my head, Howard didn't really write much about Conan uh, prior to the Frost Giant start like that. Yeah, like, yeah. There's some, you know, he mentions it a few times, but there's no, nothing really takes place in Samaria. You don't see his parents uh you don't see his childhood in the original texts uh it really i think the earliest one truly is like frost giant's daughter he's kind of like a teenager almost there i mean yeah i don't know exactly i want to say 16 could be wrong mm -hmm. don't crucify me uh don't uh yeah but, i think you're uh, right yeah i think he was 16 and i think that's the earliest we really see him in howard's original texts yeah uh and then of course like pastiche right so for all of it, for you, for all the fans out there, like this is how Fred, the head of the Horrex Signatures, puts it. And I think it's brilliant. Um, he says that uh, there's, you know, we val first off, we value pastiche. Mm -hmm. We we love pastiche, but canon to us is the original Howard texts and nothing else. So everything that Howard wrote about that happened, that is canon. Any pastiche would include like, you know. Sprague de Camp or Roy Thomas mm -hmm. or any of that, those are those are legends. Mm -hmm. Um uh, so that's like something like we we view it as like, you know, if you're at a campfire and, and a tale at a campfire gets passed down from person to person over generations. And and so in that way, we're not saying it didn't necessarily happen, but it it's not like in the history books, right? It's just like a folklore. So it's fun. I think that's a fun way to kind of look at all that stuff because no doubt, man, some there's some really fun pastiche Conan out there. I think that there is one of the things that I've learned is that there's the only reason that there's so much animosity toward, you know, non Howard stuff is just simply the fact that for years and years and years, decades, almost a mm. hundred years, like not, not quite really, but like for decades, um, close to it though right almost 100 years because it was a 28 well, 1920 close. i mean i think it, i think it's really up into 2000 ish where like we okay. started getting that stuff again but mm -hmm. howard was censored um you know and i try not to be too biased one way or another like i'd love to you know one day interview someone that knew sprog or that you know hear that side of the story but you know for everyone i've heard i think people were just pissed because you know, you couldn't get those original texts. And his, and because Howard died at such a young age, the, the rights were a mess. The man mm -hmm. couldn't really speak for himself, uh, you know, and then all, all of a sudden it turned in like he, he was writing these stories to survive. You know, yeah. he was 
he was cranking away like he's like a blue collar worker man just to to mm -hmm. survive in that small town and that terrible time to be alive you know i mean uh the the texas oil boom i mean he saw savagery you know that's where conan was born he mm -hmm. saw the the darkness in mankind you know and then there's the depression it was a tough time man and uh and but that's for conan that's how Conan was birthed out of all that. And what a brilliant man, by the way, too. Like just to school him, all self-educated, really. I mean, yeah, he just incredible. had every book he could get his hands on, man. So so I think that's why, because like for years there was this this other portrait of this man painted that wasn't so uh flattering, you know? Yeah. Oh, oh, he was weak. Oh, his mother, mm -hmm. you know, he, he had a weird mother thing going on. He was sickly. None of it's true. I mean, yeah. he you can you ask people, and I mean, the real true stories about Robert E. Howard, he was a heck of a guy, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I think that's why people are so pissed. And then, of course, I think there's the desire for a real Conan movie, right? But mm -hmm. then I try to defend that movie, too, at the same time. I'm like, yeah. listen, you have to thank the people that made that. We, and on Arnold, I mean, God, what a legend. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's a balance. That's a tough balance that all of us have to kind of play is to be like, uh, to see both sides of everything, but then understand... Yeah that that's where the anger comes from and, and, and mm -hmm. understand that. And, and honestly, like if we, if you, you and I had experienced more of that, we didn't have these stories available. I mean, I'd probably be pissed too. Yeah. So yeah. that's where it all comes from. Oh anyway, yeah. I completely lost track of what the point was. <laughs> no, no, we went in such a good direction, but we were talking about videos that you're planning to do and, and some ideas of other things that you could do. Um, for the podcast to draw in new uh, listeners. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, I mean, yeah. that's 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 the plan, right? Is I want yeah. more lore videos, and that will help me with my bandwidth. I'm just one guy, you know. Yeah. I'm. I mean, I know I mentioned social media, but we're all doing our own things. And so I'm writing, I'm editing, I'm filming, uh, and of course I have incredible resources. Uh, but you know, it's really time. And and thank yeah. you. You're right. Like I do need to remember. Like we're growing really fast because we are i mean every really time fast. I put out a video, i'm like okay let's focus on lores but uh, outside of of shifting gears slightly with the podcast to focus a little bit more on lore i also want to uh do reels uh mm -hmm. the shorts uh yeah. because there's so many fun little like i talked to sarah and i'm sure you know the story of like the lost frazetta painting yeah i'm like oh that'd be <laughs> a good one where i went when i was in texas i went to uh conan's pizza i don't know if you heard of conan's pizza no. in texas <laughs> If you visit your son and you're in the Austin area, you got to go check yeah. out Conan's Pizza. Okay, it's completely, will. <laughs> completely unauthorized, but uh, the founder was just a huge Conan fan. So it's funny because you go there and he has like Def Dealer, like, on the thing. like that's not Conan. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Like, that's right. Frazetta, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. No, I, mean, I, I know uh, Frazetta Girls and Conan have kind of given those guys a free pass to just kind of like because they've been around for so long. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. that make it interesting. So. Yeah, man. So I think I, the rest of the year, you can expect me to work my butt off to try and get four more lore videos out. I think that's my goal. Uh, yeah. I think you, you're going to see an end to season one of the podcast. And that is I'm going to take a little bit of a break. But that's so that we can recalibrate, build up another bank of of, uh, of content uh, and then and make it even better for the season two. Uh, I love it. I, I fingers crossed. I'm trying to get Roy again. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so to, cool. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you can expect that. And obviously we have a list of guests that we want to get. And I'm going to do my best to get someone from Dark Horse this time too, because I, I want I want to cover those years. And I know a lot of people yeah. are asking. So eventually 100%. we'll get to it. Eventually, yeah. eventually. Yeah. I love it, Sean. Congratulations on all the success, man. Super excited for that uh, Savage Sword coming out here in September. Um, Battle of the Black Stone is going to be so good, man. Everybody be looking for this right here. Um, and I'm going to put down below, right? I'll put your channel, Conan the Barbarian, Conan.com, Titan. Like, we'll put all of that down there because go to Conan.com, man. If you want a shirt like that, man, that's where you got to go to get it. They got mugs. They got all kinds of stuff. There you go. Look stuff. at this guy. <laughs> and then um, at uh, the at Frazetta's uh, panel and, of course, the Conan panel, we have some amazing action figures uh, that are about to be released as well. So I'm a big that's action right. figure yeah. fan, as you can tell. So. I cannot wait to get my hands on these, man. I, I got the fire and ice and I got everything else that's been going on from Frazetta. So I cannot wait to get Conan going here. 
Listen, we we have the same uh, artist that's working with the Frazetta girls, um, yeah. Eamon. He yeah. is a master <laughs> toy designer, man. This guy oh, for is sure. incredible. And uh, the Battle of the Black Stone figure, I couldn't be more excited because this is the first action figure based on what's current with the Conan, uh, you know, comics. You know, this is going to be the first toy that's based on. Well, I don't call it a toy, right? It's a collectible. Yeah. So let's, let's have huh? some uh yeah some a little respect here. around this uh, yeah yeah i got a lot of these around i got a lot of these uh, action figures <laughs> yeah uh you can expect it to be incredible and you know if that sells well i know that everyone here has like oh can you make a false doom figure yeah, like for you sure know, like, like let's do call let's do Solomon and kane um uh so like yeah man i know that uh you guys are gonna love it it's in those those accessories it comes with. I Crazy. didn't know about that until they because uh, I've been so busy. I didn't know until uh, Comic Con, and I'm like, man, that's cool. You get yeah. uh, Solomon Kane's staff and and uh, Elbrax pistol. I mean, that's a really <laughs> cool bonus. So for sure, yeah, for sure, man. Well, Sean, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming hanging out with me. Um, I hope we could do this again um, when you have some time. Oh, especially- dude, anytime. Once Battle of the Black Stone gets going, man, I would love to come back and really dig into some of these characters that um, fans are going to be introduced for the first time for some of them. I would love to, after we start to read Savage Sword and we start to see where this storyline's going and all the tie-ins and everything, it'd be fun to come back and really help expose everything that Robert E. Howard um, accomplished in such a short time at a very young age. And uh, I think, uh, man... We're just going to help make a lot more Robert E. Howard fans by bringing these characters to life like that. Oh, dude. Well, thank you so much for having me on, man. I mean, I can't, uh, you're, you're so cool and nice. And I mean, I, like I said, that really made my, my day. Like when you, you came up and, you know, you knew who I was and you'd seen all the videos. I mean, that's a totally foreign experience to me. I, I can't tell you, it's a, it, it, it was really like, motivated me more man so thank you and thank you for having me on um i really love everything you did i checked out your channel you, you're doing great content Appreciate uh it. i mean you know i can tell you care and you're really great to talk to you so i look forward to seeing you uh, you know to to grow alongside you man like uh, uh thank you so much i appreciate it yeah. no i appreciate it sean well i hope you have an amazing week i know you got a lot of videos to edit <laughs> a lot of content that you're sitting on that you gotta get to man um have an amazing week and uh let's stay in touch my friend all right man you're still here it's over go home Oh.